Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Mark Suntine, welcome to our show, and thank you. You always have so much to talk about. So you have things that are happy, but sometimes things aren't so happy, but that's what you do. You have a lot of experience in this world helping people. So tell us what you you just found out this week. So in the last week, we had two cases that I thought would be interesting to everybody. One is a couple that lives down here in Florida. They're both 77 years old, a husband and wife. And the husband is very, very sick. Um, he had um, hip re- double hip replacement, double knee replacement. He's diabetic. He's having trouble getting out of bed. Um, he's getting bed sores. And he's uh, he's reaching a point where he's going to need 24-hour care. His wife works full-time. Um, she's still a, a first-grade teacher and goes to work every day and comes home at night and is exhausted when she gets home. And um, right now, um, because he's uh, still post-operative uh, on his double knee replacement and his double hip replacement, he's got physical therapists and occupational therapists and people coming into the home. But those benefits from Medicare are about to run out. And uh, his wife, who works full time, is unable to care for uh, his needs uh, on a daily basis. Mark, does he have long-term health care insurance? No, he doesn't. Oh, boy. No long-term health care insurance. And uh, the couple's trying to figure out what to do, and they came to us at Sunshine Senior Help to ask for advice Um, and very, very, very tough situation. Um, Very, very tough situation. Um, We um, immediately um, referred uh, the couple to um, a geriatric care uh, consultant Um, for somebody. I think the last time I was here, I talked about geriatric care helpers and they're people that organize and help bring in people um, into the home, uh, sort of like the angel on the shoulder um, of the uh, of the people that need help. And um, uh, actually, today, shoulder um, of the uh, of the people that need help. Uh, actually, today, act today, um, the evaluation is going to be taking place with the geriatric care counselor. Now, this couple also has a unique thing. This was a second marriage. The wife who's working full-time, doesn't have any children. And when her husband passes, um, there's going to be nobody to take care of her. And again, she's 77 years old, so um, and nobody to look out for her, so it's a double, a double situation. Um, the first thing we need to do is make sure that um, the wife is able to get enough help to take care of her husband. And then after her husband passes, which is going to be relatively soon given how sick he is, um, figure out how to take care of her and make sure that she's able to live independently for as long as possible. I, I want to talk to you about something because when people are listening to this at home, they get very depressed. They get very sad. They say, oh my goodness, is that what I'm going to have to live through? And of course, you know that that's not true. There are so many ways that people can look ahead, take care of things, and you know, just like health Health-wise, I don't know what this man did before, but certainly can start exercising, can eat properly, can do a lot of things. So those of you who are listening, this does not have to be your fate, correct? Um, I think that in I, I haven't met the husband, so I can't I can't comment on that. But certainly, the wife, um, who's now the principal caregiver, she's in great shape. I mean, she exercises, she eats properly, she does everything she's supposed to. The husband also, I should have mentioned, is morbidly obese and is putting on more and more weight because he can't exercise because of all his health care healthcare issues. But the question here is, how do we make sure that the husband is as healthy and comfortable and with whatever time he has remaining um, is cared for and doesn't wipe out his wife's estate um, and then making sure that there's enough money and enough care for the surviving spouse to then live. She should live another 10, 15, 20 years, um, and she has the best life possible. So also. how will you do that? Well, the first thing we do is we brought in a, a geriatric care manager. 
um, one of those angels on the shoulder of, uh, of the patients, um, of, of the clients, to make sure that we understand what the home situation is, um, see what kind of need, uh, care needs are going to be necessary, and if you will, prescribe uh, a solution to uh, how to care first for the husband and then uh, make sure that the wife, who's going to be all alone after her husband passes, um, that the wife has um, somebody, somebody to help her who looks after her like a child would if there was a local child. I want everybody to know, if you've just tuned in, this is Mark Sunshine. He's the CEO of Sunshine Senior Help. And if you want to make that contact, just write this number down. Remember, this is Pencil Talk Radio, so you would put down 561-203-0490. Is that what my, our number is? I well, I actually, I actually wrote down 561-423-1671 for our website. Oh, okay. okay. Well, let's do that. Do it. No, let's do that. Yeah. What is 561 it? 1671 1671 Okay. And again, it's Sunshine Senior Help. And they can go and the website is, is up and running. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's absolutely. what we need to do. Yeah. So but, I, I'm glad that you're here doing this this morning because... This is just a sample, isn't it, of well, that, what's going on here in South Florida? Especially. Oh, absolutely. But there, were, again, there were there are two elements. The first element of what we we're looking at with this couple was making sure that we get somebody in the home to help them take care of each other, and then to help take care of the wife. The second question is, how are we going to pay for this? You know, because uh, it turns out uh, they don't have long-term health care insurance. Medicare is about to terminate benefits for uh, uh, physical therapists and occupational therapists and that whatever for coming at home, into the home. So the next question is, what do we do to pay for the care needed for the husband? And then some number of years from now, how are we going to pay for the care that's inevitably going to be needed as the surviving spouse, the wife, ages, uh, ages in place? So do you have answers? Well, we know who to call to get answers. Uh, we know which lawyers to bring in and which consultants and things like that to maximize benefits, uh, government benefits available, and uh, 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 make sure that the wife's assets are available to, to pay for health care that is not otherwise uh, being paid for by government benefits. And people have this misconception, right? There's this um, uh, for a whole bunch of reasons, uh, I don't want to speak ill if I happen to be an attorney not licensed in Florida, so I'm, of course, not giving Florida legal advice. You're just smart. Uh, well, I'm not licensed in Florida. <laughs> Let's just okay. say that. All right. <laughs> but people have this misconception that you need to impoverish yourself to maximize government benefits. And they go and visit uh, attorneys that, frankly, don't know as much about what they're doing as they should. And they talk about spend down plans and five year look backs and all sorts of stuff that are ostensibly true under the Medicaid laws. But if you go to a skilled elder care attorney, of which there are very few who actually know what they're doing in South Florida, you can, in fact, maximize your government benefits without impoverishing yourself. So the second stage in what we're going to do for this family is going to be to make sure that they maximize their government benefits without needing to impoverish themselves to get on, you know, to maximize what's going to be their Medicaid benefits. You know, Mark, as I listen to this, I think, just picture the couple or the family. They're now worried about the health. I mean, every day someone has to figure out how to get to the bathroom, how they're going to get food. Now they have to worry about the money. Right. So, I mean, they would just go to bed and hide under the covers. And just hope someone's going to help them. And that's what your organization's providing. Okay, just relax. It's not perfect, but we're going to try to do something. Well, that, that's right. And there's a lot that we can do. Um, there's a lot that we can do to bring additional resources uh, to help the family, to put that angel on the shoulder of the, of, of the, of the loved one, um, to make sure that they're being cared for in the best way possible, and to make sure that... Um, uh, a family that's got, you know, this family has got a net worth of uh, somewhere between a million and a half and two million dollars. That in fact they don't burn through it, um, but yet are able to uh, maximize government benefits. And let's be specific about what maximizing government benefits means. In the world that we live in today, there are two government programs, principally two government programs for non-veterans that are going to provide benefits. 
One of them is Medicare, and one of them is Medicaid. And Medicare, we all know, is for, is for short-term health care, meaning you go into the hospital, you go to the doctor, there's a certain amount of time. It's not for long-term, uh, long-term care needs. So Medicare does not pay for, for example, nursing home, skilled nursing. Um, it'll pay for rehab, but rehab is, you know, rehabilitation is short, right? Rehabilitation doesn't last forever because if it's lasting forever, you're not rehabilitating. Um, and it doesn't pay for all sorts of things that are the long-term health care needs. The program that pays for things that are long-term health care needs is Medicaid. And we all know Medicaid is for those people that are impoverished. Um, many people who are elderly remember Medicaid from the 60s or 70s, and it was for people that weren't like them. So if you've got an estate of a half a million, a million dollars, you saved, you have a house, you had a 401k, you've got some money, you say, well, the Medicaid's not for me because I have money. I'm not broke. I'm not living, you know, in poverty. And they go see attorneys or they go see their friends or they go see their accountant. And everybody tells them, if you can get on Medicaid, you got to burn through all your assets. you got to spend them down. you got to get rid of them. you got to do all sorts of things to impoverish yourself to prov- allow Medicaid to pay for your benefits, you know, for, for your health care. And the answer to that is simply eh, wrong. They're getting bad advice, terrible advice. There are ways to, without impoverishing a family, allow for Medicaid to pay for uh, long-term health care needs. Okay, so this is a good time for me to also tell everybody again, you're listening to <clears throat> Mark Sunshine, the CEO of Sunshine, <clears throat> excuse me, Senior Services and Senior Help, excuse me, Sunshine Senior Help. The phone number to call, remember this is Pencil Talk Radio, is 561 423 1671. Again, 561 423 1671, or you can go to their website, which is sunshineseniorhelp.com. That's Correct? right. That's absolutely right. All right. So they will get in touch with you and then right. your organization, and then you will work on this with the various uh, experts that you have. That's exactly right. That's exactly what we do. So we had another case that was even uh, uh, this week that was even more, uh, shall I say, interesting. There's a young uh, young woman. I was going to say young woman because I think of myself as a young man. Oh, even though I'm about to turn 60 years <laughs> yeah, old and I'm right yeah, in the no, center no. of the boomer times, <laughs> right. uh, your audience group. But, uh, yeah, uh, uh, so there's a, a woman who um, lives down here in Florida. And... Um, uh, She's a member of the congregation that I'm the president of, and she's four years older than me, so that makes her 64. And she and I grew up in the same town in Connecticut and went to the same synagogue, and she was friends with my sister. Oh, that was a coincidence. Yeah, a big coincidence. And her parents um, and the rest of her family live up north still in Connecticut. And she lost her mom about two or three weeks ago. And I called her up to offer my condolences, and I heard what was a very uh, sad story. Dad is still alive. I never knew mom and dad when I was a kid, but dad is still alive. And uh, mom and dad, uh, who have to be in their 90s now, um, were um, 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 declining in health. And what the family had was they had a long-term health care uh, policy that had tremendous, wonderful benefits, but had a lifetime cap or has a lifetime cap. Just before Dad died, up in the New York area, um, the monthly um, health care costs for bringing what was essentially four aides into the home full time because each parent needed two aides and infusion therapy and all sorts of stuff uh, was running twenty three thousand dollars a month, which uh, in my book is a lot. <laughs> Anybody's um, book is a lot, right? But it was caring for two for two people, and they own their own house. And uh, the estate's probably a million and a half, two million dollars, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, And uh, mom passed away, and sometime in the next two or three months, um, they're going to run up against their lifetime cap um, on their long-term health care insurance, which means there's going to be no more money for dad. So um, we're looking at some choices. Um, The first is... Um, there's no uh, uh, caregiver up in the New York area in Connecticut to coordinate care. 
and the child who's down here, and usually it's the reverse where the parents are down here and the child's up in the New York area, um, the child down here um, is pulling her hair out, flying back and forth to New York and Connecticut, trying to coordinate care. The second thing is they're about to run out of money, right, long-term care, and uh, uh, long-term care insurance, and it's likely dad's going to have to go into a nursing home. And a nursing home for what dad needs is going to be about $150,000, maybe $175,000 per year up in the New York area. And dad will get minimal care. So the question is, what do we do, right? This is um, first, in the short term, a question of coordinating the care and helping out the child who's 64 years old so that she doesn't turn to be 84 years old from the stress, if you will. And the second question is, how do we pay for maximize benefits and pay for dad's long-term health care needs without burning $175,000 a month, I mean, I mean a year, excuse me, and uh, more for supplemental care. You know, Mark, I just have to say, though, you brought up a very good point. We have a lot of situations like this where the family members are up north and the kids are down here, and this flying up and back is not a good idea. Well, even more than that, um, the parents did something um, really unfair to her, to their child, which was um, when both mom and dad were alive, and now just dad, they refused to address it. They didn't provide the daughter with the necessary powers of attorney. They didn't trust their daughter to, and maybe it wasn't a question of trust, but so many people just want to avoid the problem. They don't want to admit their um, you know, the fact that they're going to need help. They don't want to admit that there um, uh, that there's mortality. You know that we're human beings and we all have an expiration date, and they just sort of ignored what was going to happen. Um, so now, instead of the estate being set up and the benefits being set up, and the healthcare providers being set up, um, now um, we've got a scramble time um, to figure out what what to do. Um, as the uh, long-term health care insurance runs out. You know, Mark, but I have to say this, that a lot of times it's the kids who are at fault because when the parent, there are parents who say, let's talk about the kids. No, no, I don't want to talk about you're dying. Let's not discuss that. And, and that's so wrong. So the two of them have to come together. Ab absolutely. Although what I see more in uh, our business and also in our affiliated funeral business is the parents don't want to talk about it or the parents don't want to uh, realize that some of the aspects that they're in a certain way being a little bit selfish, right? Because if somebody doesn't deal with their long-term health care needs, if someone doesn't plan ahead, if they don't get the right counsel, if they don't have long-term health care insurance, if they don't um, have a, a geriatric care you know, helper, so to speak, um, what ends up happening is um, they're burdening their kids in a way that is um, unfair and unfortunate. Um, perhaps the best uh, example of that is in the side of our business, which is uh, the funeral and cremation side of the business. People will come in to do their pre-planning. They'll say, well, we want to pre-plan our funeral. We want to pre-plan our cremation. We want to do all these things. But we don't want anything. We don't, we don't want anybody to come when we're to, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. We just want to do the minimum. We want to do the minimum. And they don't understand that their funeral, their planning, their health care, they're doing this not for them. They're doing this for their children. And so many people just refuse to address the problem for natural emotional reasons and then end up burdening their children um, in ways that are really horrible with guilt and, and, and remorse and the children wondering whether or not they did the most for their parents and the parents not being willing to accept help. Well, I think that's where a good counselor comes in. So they have to explain this to these people. That's Listen, right. Listen, you know, just what you're saying. And so that's what you offer at the Sunshine Senior Help, I believe, that you take each issue and say, okay, you're saying this, but this is what you want to think about, right? Well, that's right. So we have a very high level of, uh, of shall I say, technical expertise. Although, again, we're not, we're not a, a lawyer referral firm and we're not lawyers uh, here in the state of Florida. Um, we still have high levels, and we don't provide legal advice. Um, we refer them to people that can that can help them the right way. Um, we um, or, or we introduce them, I should say, to people that can help them. Um, we um, have very high levels of expertise, but the thing that distinguishes really what we do in all aspects of our business is to listen to each person 
and to listen to their story and really almost act like a social worker um, to try and help them um, help them uh, do the best for themselves and for their family so they're not a burden. Um, you know, before we, we're running, going to run out of time s soon, but I want people to know you a little bit better, and I have this question for you. Here you've been a prominent attorney in some of the other states up north and all. Why are you doing this, Mark? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're so loaded now with all this, and what, what drives you? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to answer. I'm not sure it's how like to the answer that. That's like elevator speech, right? There's yeah, I, I, I honestly. I mean, you're... Yeah, I honestly don't know how to answer <laughs> you <know>? that. It's <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, um, we're talking about uh, we're talking about trying to help our neighbors. We're talking about right. trying to help our friends. I'm talking about trying to help my peers, um, my family. I'm not. I'm not sure how to answer that because that's like what we're supposed to do. Yes. You know. Right. Because it's, well, uh, and you're such a professional that. You're taking all your years of experience and that you've been doing things in a big, wide world of finance and, and law, but now you realize that this is probably one of the most important things that are happening to our our boomer and elder population, and so you've jumped in feet first. Yeah, it's it's happening to our boomer and elder population, and it's happening to ourselves. I guess I do know the answer to okay, that. Okay, good. So, um, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Jewish, I'm president of a synagogue, uh, Temple Bethel, greatest synagogue uh, in America, at least, I believe. That also has a great one of, reputation here. Yeah, right? also one of the few growing synagogues with a vibrant community and financially well off and great management and a fantastic clergy. But, um, you know, uh, uh, as a, as a, a, a Jew, there's um, certain commandments that were, and by the way, this would be the same for Christians, Muslims, Catholics, right? Everybody believes in the Old Testament. There's certain commandments that were 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 given um, in the in the Torah. And I think there's actually 613 commandments in the Torah. Not that I follow every one, but <laughs> there's there's one of them uh, there that's mentioned a few times about uh, uh, loving thy neighbor as thyself. You know the sort of golden rule. And I'm a big believer in actually um, um, that particular ethic. Which is, um, you know, depending on how you how you phrase it, you know, don't do one to others that you wouldn't want done to yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, you know, treat that's everybody it. like family. That's kind of that's kind of it. And we've got this yawning need out there. Um, and it, again, it's 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 my friends. It's your friends. It's our neighbors. We're in the age group. And if we have the ability to help others, I think we should be doing it. I love that. See, and that's why. You you are doing this. You've taken all your experiences, as I said, and you put this into this this um, beautiful pot of gold in a sense. And so people have to respond. So I'm going to give them again your phone number, which is five six one four four two three sixteen seventy one four five six one four two three sixteen seventy one, and just look up sunshineseniorhelp.com, and you'll be able to talk with whether it's Mark or one of your staff members. Um, I am really happy that, that you're doing this. And one thing that you have said, you have to be very careful who you go to. As you said, it has to be the right attorney, has the right financial planner, the right funeral person, the right geriatric care managers. And that's, I think, where you just ease it in. And you they talk to you and you give them choices. You know, you, you explain. Absolutely. So. Ab absolutely. And I, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time with the vast majority of the, uh, I shouldn't say the vast majority, with, with many of the elder care attorneys down here in South Florida. Um, I have, uh, you know, because of my professional training and knowledge, the ability to figure out who's good and who isn't, who just hung up a shingle and claims to be an elder care attorney and is really a divorce attorney um, or a family attorney um, and isn't really who they claim to be. Well, Mark, this has been wonderful, and I know that you uh, will continue to do things with us. I'm looking forward to some excitement with with your business and um, and with your um, and your organizations. I mean, you're you know you're a very uh, gratuitous person, and I'm happy that you're here. So, thank you. I know it was early this morning, but we appreciate it, and we will uh, we will talk to you again. Okay, great. Look forward to it. Thank you so much.